Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, that you have always loved us and you always will, Lord, God Almighty. Father Jesus, Holy Spirit, we just welcome you in this place today. And have your way with us. Have your way with the word, oh Lord God. You're going to be upon it, oh Lord God, and break every chain in your name, oh Lord God. Yeah. So, Father, you know every need, oh Lord God. Personally, Lord God, each and every one of us, oh Lord God. Hallelujah. I pray that you just touch our hearts today in a new way, oh Lord God. And you take us a deeper, oh Lord God. There will be less of us and more of you, oh Lord God. That we love you, that you be exalted in this place today, Almighty God. The great I am, hallelujah. El Shaddai, glory to your name, oh Lord God. Prince of Peace, Jesus. Touch our hearts, touch our minds with your peace that has all understanding, oh Lord God. Oh, glory, Father God, that you are in control of this place, oh Lord God. Not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, oh Lord God. And we just thank you, Lord God, that we can all gather together here today in your name, oh Lord God. In unity, oh Lord God. Hallelujah. We love one another, oh Lord God. We thank you. We praise you, Lord God. Give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's a wonderful thing to have a home that I have a wife that loves the Lord, I have a child that loves the Lord, they know the word. Amen. And they rejoice. We get together, we pray, we go to show far in our home, we stay in our home. It's wonderful to have a home like that. Where Jesus comes first, you know. Um, you know, it, a lot of things have been going on there. I believe whatever you have in your life, you should utilize it for the Lord. Um, be a good steward of your homes. You know, be the fathers and mothers of your homes. You know, those holy uh, people that God has placed in authority over your children, over your teenagers, even some of you, even over your parents, because maybe they're in need of your help now. But it's, 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 it's a wonderful thing to have a house that is set on rock. A house that you know is a sanctuary. You know, we all have our little turmoils and all these things that happen in our lives, but it's a beautiful thing to know that you can come home. And even when things may not be going exactly the way you'd like them to go, you know, God has a plan. You can go and you can get with your wife, you can get with your kids, you can do whatever you need to do. Talk to them, bring up the word, pray with them, and uh, bring it to an end that gives God glory. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. God is good. I, um, some of you have noticed I haven't been here. I wasn't here last week. Um, I'm, my job during the week, I work at General Motors, so... Um, when they tell me to go walk on the strike line, I'm walking on the strike line. If I, if I have no choice, they, they have to be in the union. They won't, they won't be good standing with the union. So I apologize to you that I was not able to be here last Sunday with you. Um, I want you to know that I love it here, and I really don't want to miss church ever. Okay? So um, thank you for your prayers, and, and God bless you. Amen? The, um, I will tell you that during the last couple of days, I've been kind of just one sermon after the other. I've been writing and writing and writing and really looking. What do, what do, what do I need to bring to the church today on Sunday? And I, I wrote two. They're good. They're very good. I, and and it, it was a real great time between me and God and getting in the Word and seeking His voice and spending time with Him, you know. But just kept thinking, this isn't the one. So I kept praying and praying and praying. And then last night, God gave me one for today. Amen. And I felt it in my spirit. And I knew that this was the one. Amen. So I want to um, just let you know that, um, that I am seeking the Holy Spirit whenever I have the uh, opportunity to come up here, that it's Him and not me. Amen. There's a lot of times we can find something real easy to say up here. It's not hard to do. 
but you know you can go on the internet you can find something on the internet very easily to say up here and a lot of pastors do that do they not uh, but you know and we can glean off of what other pastors do in this and that but I, for me i like to really spend my time in, in the word and, and find where god wants me to be in that place amen Kind of slow right now getting started because there's something on my heart I really feel that we need to do. And I really would love it if everyone would just go, go give somebody a hug, shake somebody's hand, tell them to love, love them to the church. Come on, just get out of your seat. Maybe you feel like praying with you today. People in the front say hi to people in the back. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
And really, this is what this is all about. We're gathering in unto Jesus. We're coming together unto Jesus. Amen? And, and, and this is what's been on my, my mind. Amen? And it's so important that we come together. Amen? Uh, Hebrews 10.35, probably a real familiar scripture to a lot of you here, because I know you're studying the word. It says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more, as you see the day approaching. Amen. We don't want to be a people that forsake the Lord and forsake assembling together. We want to be a people that come into the loving presence of God every opportunity that is available to us. Amen? There's strength there for you. There's wisdom there for you. There's love there for you. We're stronger when we come together. Amen? So I was, whenever I do this kind of thing, I like to look at what it says in the dictionary. So in Webster's dictionary, hi Sarah, gather is to gather is defined as collecting, to pick or to harvest, to accumulate for the purpose of coming together in a body and to cluster around a focus of attraction. Yeah. Sounds like we're doing here, that's what we're doing here, doesn't it? Amen. We're coming around, we're clustering together, we're assembling around a focus of attraction. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That attraction, of course, is Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Lord. We are attracted to the loving presence of Jesus. The attraction being his love, his peace, his joy, and his wisdom. His goodness is so good. Isn't it? And his fairness is not a respect for persons. Amen. He loves us all equally. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We're attracted by his strength and his grace and his mercy. We're attracted to the King of Kings because of his faithfulness and his sacrifice. We cluster around, we press in. We desire always to get a little closer. And we pray, oh Lord, let me just get a little closer to you today. Let me feel your presence in my home a little more today. Help me in this business situation or at work. I need your help, Lord. I'm pressing in right now. I'm coming up to you. A little bit closer. And I think that's as we go through this journey of life, is the end game. We finally, as we run for the prize, we finally come to a place where there he is. And yes, when we see his face, we can look into his loving eyes. And we can feel his embrace upon us. In his glory. In heaven. So we come together, we cluster around. We come together to be closer to his holiness, his beautiful holiness, that beautiful purity of God. So pure and clean and, and wonderful. The answer is the answer to everything. Amen. We come to praise Him when we can. We come to praise Him when we cluster together, when we assemble. We are the gatherers. We gather together as a, as a 
community. And we go out together more to bring them into our community, which is the community of Jesus. His way, his life, his truth. Today we come together as gatherers, us people that assemble unto Jesus. What a beautiful thing. And God is so good because he gives us women's meetings, you know, for the women. They go to these women meetings and they can get together and strengthen themselves as women. We have men's groups so we can strengthen ourselves as men. Open Bible studies where everybody can come. Spanish ones, English ones, ones for the youth, ones for children. Yeah, there's so many opportunities to assemble and to gather together. Amen? Around Jesus and around his holy word. We bow down to him. We worship him in this house. And him alone. No other but Jesus. There's only one way. It's Jesus. And we need him. We need him. And he only wants to know you. He wants to know me. He's waiting for you just to call on his hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you guys just say that name? Jesus. Jesus. Say it again. Jesus. 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 There is power in that name. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So we bow down and worship him and him alone. And we call him Lord. Not just Savior, which is so important. But now we move from calling him Savior to Lord. You are my King. You are my Lord. I serve you. I don't serve man. I don't serve government. I don't serve money. I serve you, God. And I want more. But what I want more of in my life personally is not money. It's not new clothes. I like them, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but I want more him. I want more Jesus. I want more Holy Spirit. I want more Jehovah John. I want more time in this intimate time with him when you feel his glory just coming within you and just swelling. So you just gotta share. You gotta tell that. And we yeah. We look at our, our bulletins, we say, what's coming up next? What can I do? Game night, yay! Wednesday night, all right, there's a Bible study with my name on. Amen. And I can come together. And there's something there for me in his word. I don't want to miss it. I do not want to miss it. I've got to get it. What if they say something that might change my life forever in that Bible study? I don't want to miss it. Amen? Amen. Well, that's the way I look at Bible studies. Amen? I, I, I listen to the pastors always that I'm looking for this great, amazing word, which very often they have. I'm looking for the new guy that just walked in there and says, hey, you know, this is how it affected me. This is how it touched me. This is what's going on with me when I hear that word. And that touches my heart. Amen? My passion grows. My compassion grows. My love grows. Amen? And where does it happen? It happens when we gather together. Amen? Oh, and there's a cost. There is a cost. You have to be able to walk away from so many things, from mother and father, from brother and sister, and put Jesus first. It's a cost. He causes it. He wants to be first in our lives. 
It doesn't mean don't run from them, don't be around them, don't, you know, love them. But it means that they got it. You got it. When we left here 10 years ago, well, 12 years ago now, I guess, the, we had, we loved you guys. It wasn't nothing about not loving this church and loving the ministries we had had, loving our families, loving our friends, all these things. But God said, go. And we had to go. We had to be willing to lay down and make God first. Not anything else first. Not our mothers or fathers or sisters or brothers or friends, our homes, our city. But you go because God calls you to go. And it's part of the cost. Amen. And then he asks us beyond that, he says that you must be willing to pick up his cross and follow him. I know you guys know that I walk across through the community every once in a while, preaching in the streets or whatever with some wonderful people from this church. But uh, he's not calling us to that. He's calling us to be willing to die for him. They say, are you willing to die for me? Are you willing to lay your life down? That's what he's calling us to. When he says to pick up our cross and follow after him. Will we make that sacrifice? Will we be a living sacrifice unto God? So there's a cause. And these are all decisions that no matter how much you hear about it, really until that moment when that time comes, that's the only time you're going to really know what you're going to do in that time. What am I going to do? How am I going to react? What will I lay down for Jesus? Will I lay it all down for Jesus? Will I go where he says go, like the song? Will I say what he says? Will I pray what he prays? Will I live as he lived? There's a cost. But we're willing to pay that cost. Because we love him. Because he is first in our lives. Because he is wonderful. Because when we call on him, he always answers, he never leaves us, he never forsakes us, and he's always there no matter what we need. Amen. We're willing. He lays his voice down the door and says, we're willing to pay that cost. Amen. I know I'm willing to pay that cost, and I know many of you are willing to pay that cost. Many of you, some of you are really going on and off. That's okay. It's okay. Because it's, you have to, maybe it's one of those things you need to wrestle with a little bit. You need to eat. You have to get in the Word. You have to really soak in, get into prayer. God, what would you call me to have to leave for you, oh Lord God? When we came back here, we had a beautiful home, 4,000 square foot house, five bedrooms, three full bathrooms, you name it, sunken living rooms, three decks. And I'm looking at this place, and I'm like, God, do you want me to leave this? I love this. This is what I always want. This is perfect. And I struggle with it, but I always seek the after him. And I said, Lord, is this really what you want? Why did you let me have this stuff that you just want me to walk away? I think you just wanted to know if I would. And if I would trust in him, and, it, and weeks of prayer, weeks of prayer, that was the only word I got from God about it, trust in me. Amen? And I'm glad I'm back. And I'm glad I'm back. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen? God has done amazing things for us. Amen? I, I love the church. I thank you for being my friends. Amen. I love the ministries that are being created here. The new people that I get to meet. It's beautiful. Amen. Amen. Revelations chapter 4, verses 8 through 11. Because I've loved everyone too, like. Okay. Amen. I'm going to start. 
The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. And they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, amen. The others lay down their crowns, amen. Hallelujah. They give him honor, they give him thanks, they give him glory. And they do it forever. We're called here to pray unceasingly, to rejoice always, to remain in the presence of God, and a why to prepare us for a place that that is what we do. The kingdom we belong to, that's what they're doing. They're crying out, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. In Revelations 4, 11, It says, you are worthy, O Lord. You are worthy, yes. O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. You are worthy. You created all things, and by your will they exist. By your will, all the things around us exist. You are so marvelous, God. And you receive all, all the props, all the glory. You receive it all. Amen. Hallelujah. We gather to hear. My spirit wants to sing. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen? Amen. We gather together to honor our God, to pay homage unto Him. Why are we here? Why did you come? To pay homage, to honor God, to, to trust in Him, to to, to, to give on to him. This time, our offerings, our tithes, our alms, our, 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 our love, our, our honor, as we glorify him, he, we lift him up high. Amen. In Revelations 15, 3 and 4, it says, Great and marvelous are your deeds. Great and marvelous are your deeds. Amen. Lord God Almighty, just and true are your ways. King of the nations, King above all kings, name above all names. Who will not fear you, Lord, and bring glory to your name? For you alone are holy. We gather together to trust in to his holiness. To pray together in one accord. To love him and to love each other. Amen. To love one another in this place. To, to, to lift each other up, exhort each other, encourage one another, pray for one another. That's why we're here for one another. To love each other. Amen? Amen. That's why I think the Lord wanted me to have everyone just get up and hug each other and shake each other's hand, pray for one another, and love one another. Amen? Because he's in charge of this service. Amen? Hallelujah. We cannot forsake the opportunities to assemble unto him. A 
Say hallelujah. Jesus, who will never leave you nor forsake you, amen? He's in you, he's with you, 
He's all about you. He's your biggest fan. Amen. Hallelujah. Reach out to him, church. Reach out to him and worship today. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know, I really have it on my heart when we're worshiping that someone else here may need to be needed. Someone else here may need that healing. And you know, it's going to come through your worship that they're healed. Amen. How many people I've heard in my life, in my journey, of people that it was during worship, all of a sudden they just felt something. It just happened. They were just healed. It was, maybe it wasn't physical. Maybe it was transformational. Maybe it was a heart healing. Maybe it was a mind healing. Maybe it, but it was a healing. And it happened out of worship. It happened because they read, people were worshiping and people were in one accord. Amen. And people began to be healed. People began to feel anointing coming down and gifts coming down upon their lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Be ready, church. Be ready. Be prepared. God wants to do something today in this place with you. Amen. Hallelujah. That he wants to do something in you today, man. Hell, he had already done something in me. Now let's do something in you. Amen. And he is so worthy of my worship. Amen. He is holy. You are so good, Lord. The author of miracles. Our healing, our provider, our deliverer, our savior, our leader, hallelujah, our teacher, our comfort. So today I'm gonna, we're going to open up with a song and then pray that y'all get to your feet, amen. I'm not going to tell you to get to your feet. I'm just going to hope that you do. I'm hoping that some of you come on up here and press in at the auditory, man. Just come on up and just be up. And if you don't come up here, I'm not going to judge you. This isn't about judgment. Okay? I pray that he touches you right where you're at if you don't come up here. If you can't get there, I'm praying that he touches you right where you're at. Amen? Be bold, church, in worship. Be bold in worship. Amen. And honor God. Amen. You are welcome in this place, Holy Spirit. You are welcome in this place. Revelation 7, 12 says, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom. Thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's worship this church. Let's praise him in this house. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, just begin to pray in tongues. So I said, dude, just begin to pray in tongues.